Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks so much for being here everybody. And again, welcome new subscribers. Well today guys, we're gonna talk about unforgiveness and the severe narcissist. A lot of you have chosen to forgive your abuser, which doesn't mean you have to tolerate the abuse anymore. It doesn't mean that you have to subject yourself to abuse if you forgive your abuser. But a lot of you, I know, have a hard time with forgiveness because the abuse was so evil and so severe. And only those who have gone through it can understand the type of abuse that these types dish out. It's not human. It's not humane. It's evil. And uh, we know that the severe malignant narcissist or narcopath is a life-altering entity if you run into one of these types and you get tangled up in their web of destruction. It's life-altering, guys. Your life is never the same. I wish I could say, yes, you know, things will go back the way they were and you'll be the same person, but you're not. You're forever changed by these types. And they cause losses upon losses that you can't even imagine. And if you've encountered a few of these types, boy, it's like getting punched in the stomach over and over again, losing everything you have. Now, if you've experienced this, let me know in the comments below, because a lot of you, and I've spoken to a lot of you, and uh, you know, because you know your own circumstances, a lot of times uh, the targets are very intelligent, successful people. It's not as though they're ignorant or naive or um, uneducated. No, narcissists, severe narcissists love to target successful people, and they love to target uh, well-liked and intelligent people. It's, it's like a trophy to them, you know? They really don't get a lot of uh, narcissistic supply from targeting people that are easy targets and, you know, really are naive. Um, they really like a challenge, and it's a trophy to get somebody successful, somebody that makes them look credible, somebody with a good reputation, somebody with morals and ethics. That's who they target most times. And they slowly over time find your weak spots. They slowly over time understand what will get to you and how to torment you and how to destroy your relationship with God and destroy your trust in people and to destroy your self-confidence and most times everything you've worked for. So we are called though, this is the discrepancy, is we're called to forgive everyone in life. But when we see that this person is run by the adversary and is completely demonic, are we called to forgive? Well, a lot of times people can't forgive because there's no resolution, guys. You know what I'm talking about. How, how can you forgive when the person doesn't even acknowledge your pain or even acknowledge that they did anything wrong? You know, they basically just want you to be better and they want to continue the abuse. And the flying monkeys just say, forget about it. And they don't even acknowledge that what you experienced really happened. That's the problem. It's hard to forgive if no one's validating what happened, correct? That's the frustrating part. But you have to understand, forgiveness is not for them. You know, it's not, you're not doing them a favor. You're doing yourself a favor because it really helps your relationship with God. That's what God asks us to do. And it will give you a sense of peace to know you did your part and that you did what God asked you to do. Now, a lot of people will say, well, you know, people that are demonically oppressed or demons aren't redeemable. They're fallen angels. We've already discussed that. How, yes, some of these types can be modern-day Nephilim, really, because they're that evil. You know, their behavior is not normal, correct? It's not normal. It's not humane. And they commit repeat evil without any remorse or guilt. So that we know is not of God. But... I received a word just to let you know. I received a word from the Holy Spirit audibly in my left ear that said, for me, forgive him in regard to the narcissist that I knew years ago that was extremely severe with their abuse. And I remember fighting the Holy Spirit saying, I can't do that, God, you know, like, oh, don't ask me to do that, you know. I was like seething through my teeth, like, oh, I can't do it, you know, and I fought God on it, but 
That's what he asked me to do. So I did. But it doesn't mean, and let me let me be very clear about this, it does not mean that you have to engage with that person ever again. It doesn't mean that you must tolerate their abuse anymore. There's a difference. You can love them from afar. You forgive them. You bless them. And you go no contact. You don't associate with them. You don't put yourself in the line of fire anymore. You don't let the devil do their dirty work on you anymore. There's a difference. Forgiveness is to do what God has asked us to do and to have peace in your own life. Now, if a lot of people who have been victims of narcissistic abuse tend to ruminate a lot or bring up the subject or are having a hard time and really still bring up what the narcissist did over and over again, that's PTSD, guys. You know, the trauma is so severe many times um, that they're living in the present. They're still dealing with the outcome of the abuse. They're still dealing with the residual damage every day. Some people have lost everything they had and they've had to rebuild. Sometimes this has happened multiple times in their life due to narcissists. And they wake up every day and they, they're still putting their life together. So it is a constant reminder every day, whereas the narcissist is having a blast. You know, they're on new supply number 500. And they're, you know, the, their gregarious selves being charming and as if nothing happened. They don't have remorse or guilt, so they're able to do that. But if you're a normal person, a human being on this earth with a conscience and with empathy and compassion for other people and normal feelings, um, yeah, you're going to be devastated. You're going to really have to use all of your strength to pick yourself up and rebuild. And you're going to have to rely on God. And many times that's why God allows these things to happen is because, you know, you'll need God. You'll look to God. You'll learn to trust the Lord. And you'll see the Lord is your provider. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is your redeemer. And the Lord as the one who frees the captives. And he has for me and he, he has for so many others. So he wants you to rely solely on him, which is why he isolates you to train you and to bring you closer to him as he did the prophets of old. Anybody he used in the Bible, he isolated, he set aside, and he trained them, and he put them through the fires and tests like you would not believe. But they were called by God, they were used by God, and they were trained in their isolation and in their um, trials. So look at it that way, guys. Look at it that way. It's God's uh, grace on your life, removing that person from your life. But is it easy? No. Is it easy to forgive somebody like that? Absolutely not. You know? But remember, many people can't forgive just because nothing's been validated. You know, there hasn't been any resolution or acknowledgement as to what happened to them. So many people have been, you know, flying monkeys to the narcissist. And, uh, you know, they just want you to be better. Well, just move on. Just forget about it. Don't bring it up. What does it matter? Move on. Well, people can move on if it's acknowledged. You know, if you were t attacked in the middle of the street by somebody and they just said, eh, forget it. No, many times you, you want people to believe you that it really happened. But if people doubted that it happened, if they said, well, I highly doubt that happened, but just forget it, you would feel violated. You wouldn't feel heard. You wouldn't feel validated. You, you would want to know that that really happened to you. And if somebody sat you down and said, I understand, that must have been horrible and had some sort of empathy or compassion for what happened to you and simply comforted you and listened and validated that what you were saying was a f indeed what happened, then you could move on. But it's very hard to move on and forgive if there's no validation, which is why I believe the Lord called me to run this channel, to validate all of you. So if you haven't heard it from other people in your life, if you haven't heard it from the narcissist, especially the narcissist, just know that I validate what you went through, and so do so many other people on this channel. And I hope that gives you hope 
this holiday season to know that you have been heard. People do understand. Others have gone through what you have gone through. It is severe. It is demonic in origin. It's not normal behavior. It's not of God. And to know that God understands most of all and that he has witnessed evil on this earth as well to a greater extent, to an extent we can't even imagine. So if anybody understands evil people on this planet and the demonic, it's our Lord. So I hope that gave you some hope uh, before the holidays here, and I hope to have more videos out, guys. Um, forgiveness is hard. It's what we're called to do. I also heard in another word, guys, just so you know, I probably put it out on this channel before, but it was a word that said, um, you know, to forgive others regardless of the spirit they carry within them. So I can't make that up, guys. If that's what the Lord wants us to do, we're called to, to love everybody and forgive everybody regardless of the spirit they carry. You know, let God deal with them and their judgment. And believe me, they will be judged. <laughs> they will be judged. So God is the ultimate, uh, you know, creator. He's our, our, our God who decides who is redeemable and who is not. And some have reprobate minds. Some are unchangeable. You know, they've succumbed to evil and, you know, they're non-redeemable. But, you know, God knows who those people are. Uh, and it's up to him to do that. And we are to just protect our soul, protect our eternity, and uh, do as the Lord called us, calls us to do. So I hope this was helpful, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if forgiving your narcissist is something that you've done or something that you find hard to do and why. You know, as I said, many times you haven't been validated. So no, I'm validating you as others on the channel uh, have hopefully, hopefully with their comments and their support here. So thanks, everybody. I appreciate you all being here and uh, more videos to come. If um, you'd like one-on-one -on -one Christian guidance, please email me at angelhavenministry at gmail.com, and I will email you back on how to do that. And please like, share, and subscribe. It always helps the channel to grow, and the more subscribers, the better, obviously. Um, it gets the videos videos I make. Um, it makes them seen more in the, uh, the feed, I guess you'd call it. So thanks so much, and please follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Rumble. And I will see you soon, guys. God bless.